Hey, hey, Girl Scouts, welcome to Camp Woodhaven. We are hanging at, out at the pond here, and we're gonna learn a little bit more about ponds today on our hike. So behind us, um, or behind me, in front of you, um, is our lovely pond. And what are some things that you guys notice? So um, I know the first thing that drew my attention were the pretty pink flowers and the like lily pads all over the place. Um, so a fun fact is that water lilies and lotuses are pretty similar, um, but the thing that differenti differentiates them is that water lilies, um, the flower floats right on the water, whereas lotuses, as you can see, they come right out of the water. So they're very pretty. They're not sitting in the water, they're um, above the water. So that's kind of what, um, how you can tell them apart. They're very pretty, they're very pink. Um, but there's a lot of really cool, fun activities that you can do at the water's edge. Um, so what we're going to do, and what I encourage you guys to do, is just take a couple minutes and just kind of sit quietly and just kind of see what you notice going around. Um, there's definitely a lot of birds hanging out here. I definitely see a whole bunch of dragonflies kind of um, flying around. Um, and the reason that we see dragonflies in water all the time around ponds and streams is because they have to come here to lay their eggs. So they're just kind of hanging out, going all over the place. Um, every now and then you might hear this weird little like ah, noise. I can't make the noise. But there's like a frog um, hanging out in here as well. There's probably lots of frogs to be honest. Um, so frogs are amphibians. So that means that they um, hang out in the water a lot. Um, they need the water to lay their eggs, and their skin needs to be kept moist. So that's why they're going to be hanging around ponds or stream um, all the time. So if you guys are have access to a pond or some sort of water, um, make sure that you have your parents' permission and somebody's watching you. Um, you have your life jacket if you're really getting in there. Um, but just take a couple minutes and just observe the pond. So we're at the water's edge and you can see that there's a whole bunch of little paw prints right here. So if you can zoom in, there's like one, two, three, four, five, their little fingers, and then you can kind of see their pad right here. But we've got some sort of little creature that comes down, maybe a raccoon or something like that, that likes to come down here and um, get water. Another thing that I see when I'm exploring the pond, um, there's like little snails. So I um, count quite a few of them right here on the edge, just kind of hanging out. Um, so here's one that I already grabbed, and you can kind of see him. Um, I think there's a little guy in there. But we found a little snail. So on this little lily pad, you can kind of see it. We've got like a little water spider. Um, and when he moves, he kind of jumps across the water a little bit. Oh, hey, a worm. Hi, worm. Um, but we'll see if we can get him to kind of jump, but he'll kind of, um, jump into the water for a second, but he'll stay on top of the surface, and then he will jump onto the next little lily pad. So, let's see if we can, oh, there he was, there he goes. see him but he's running across the surface. Um, so the reason that here's another one. water spiders and like water striders do this is because of surface tension. Um, so all the molecules, of, do you see that kind of, they jumped in. Um, all the water molecules are kind of sticky and so um, when he sits on the surface, they kind of pull together for a second and then he can jump off. Um, and they usually spread, oh, he's doing some cool stuff, spread out like this um, so that they can get as much surface tension as possible. Um, there's some really cool pictures of like people who um, like are swimmers or sharks or stuff like that. When they come out of the water, there's always like this one second where there's um, just a whole layer of water over them where they should be over um, 
getting out of the water, but it's just because the water tension is clinging to them for a second. So I think we lost our little water, water spider. Here's another really good example of water tension. So we've got our little water droplets and they, you can see there's some pretty nice sized ones compared to like my finger, they're pretty big. Um, but the water is holding, um, kind of got its surface tension and it's all clinging together um, as much as it can. So we've got some little water droplets um, hanging out there. And then there's our little spider friend again. We'll see if we can get him to move. There it goes. So on this edge of the pond, we found some deer hoof prints. So they've got just kind of the two um, lines from their hooves. They just kind of walked across this part. Um, here's a really cool spot as well because the water has um, isn't up as high as it was, but we've got some of our lily pads here. And let me see if I can get one out. I don't know if I want to. No, I don't. Okay, so we're just walking around the edge of the pond right now, hoping that we can spot frog. It's gone now because it existed. You can definitely see some water striders though. Maybe a couple tadpoles in here. We get nice and close. Let's see what we can find. Oh, there's a little fish in the water. We definitely have some algae going on. Over, I don't know if you guys can, you probably can't see that. What else do we have? Okay, there you go. So we're looking for frogs. Usually when you, oh, there's two damselflies. They're a little bit different than dragonflies. So dragonflies have two sets of wings and damselflies just have one set of wings. So we'll let them continue on their business. Okay. Oh, we scared something, but we didn't see it. The frogs are kind of making that like weird gulping kind of croak noise. We've got some birds over here. Something just went. Okay. This is kind of got like a down tree in the water here which might not be sightly, but it's a really great habitat for fish um, or small creatures to hang out under because it gives them a little bit more protection than just open water. There's a really pretty dragonfly. Oh. 
summer's kind of a lazy time for ponds. In the spring, there's a lot going on. There's frogs and fish and everyone like laying their eggs. But right now, everything's a bit bigger now and not really hanging out on the shore. If you're into fishing, you can do some stuff. We found some more water striders. So here's all those water striders over here kind of using surface tension to kind of hang out on top of on top of the water. They're kind of just skedaddling around on it, doing their little water thing. No. So right here, right there, um, that is the um, kind of dried up part of a lotus. So inside those weird little hivey look at pockets um, are where the seeds are. So we've got some of those hanging out around our pond. Um, we also had a couple frogs jump in, but I think I missed them. Looking for our frog friends. It's easier um, if you're going to go look for frogs. Make sure you're going really quiet. Because as soon as they hear you, they will jump off and... They make some very interesting noises, and then so do you if you're scared. Hmm. Not seeing any frogs. Get our little fake duck out there protecting us. We've got a little, little hole in the ground. So you'll see these around ponds. Um, sometimes they're like crawdad holes. Sometimes they're like snake holes or other little critters um, that like to dig holes um, and live kind of close to the pond. Ooh, this might be a good spot got some taller grass, you've got some kind of trees in the water. This would be a good spot to hang out if I was a frog. We've got a little daisy right here. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can find something. There's our dragonfly friend. Frogs are experts at camouflage. So in Ohio, we have a couple, quite a few different types of frogs and toads. Um, and if you want like a really good breakdown on that, I would check out Dandy's camp creature feature from a different, a couple weeks ago. Um, but kind of the big green frogs that are like big as your hand, um, those guys are bullfrogs. Um, and they're like a bright green. They really, really match um, the, the greenery on the side of um, the banks um, really well. Um, and they can almost be kind of like a neonish color. You'll also see a lot of leopard frogs um, and they're kind of got like a speckling to them. So they're kind of um, brownish, but they also have a green. They really do have like kind of a leopard um, spotting to them, but they camouflage really well into um, kind of this sort of murky um, kind of water that we see on the edges of ponds and um, creeks and stuff like that. So right here, it's really quiet so we don't scare them, there's a whole bunch of little minnowy guys hanging out. Um, Oh, and I scared them, but if you were really quiet um, and patient, you could get a net and um, kind of put it in there and wait for a little bit until you could catch some minnows so you could kind of check them out, um, look at them, and then let them back go.
one of my favorite things to do in the summer um, is at nighttime go outside and you can hear all of the frogs kind of singing um, especially in the spring you get all the spring peepers out and they're the tiny little frogs um, and they just chorus up the night okay. right here we've got a good close it close ish up on our dragonfly friend so he, he's gone but if you had time to look at him, you would see that he has two sets of wings um, instead of one set like the damselflies do. But we've got um, a lotus flower that's about to bloom right here. There's a really pretty shot of one of the lotuses right over here. And on the one behind it, there's a really pretty dragonfly. So these lotuses are um, not native to the area so um, they're really really pretty but you can kind of see how they have started to take over our tiny little pond over here so if you um, are planting these in like your pond at home that's cool um, but if they're in like a actual um, actual pond like a natural pond, um, you want to watch out because they will kind of take over things. So here's another view of one of the um, lotus pods um, kind of hanging off of a stalk right there that we found in the water. Um, but here's a pretty close lotus flower to us. So I'm just going to kind of zoom in and kind of show you. So here, whoop, this kind of yellow piece. Um, is gonna compress the seeds in it and then as it um, the flower starts to open and kind of the leaves start falling off it's gonna turn into that brown um, kind of seed pod that you see back here there it is so it focuses for your adventure around the pond or the stream or whatever kind of water you have around you, um, I would grab like a little bucket um, if you have one. This one just happens to be a viewfinder bucket, so if you have one, that's even more cool. Um, I just also have a clear container that I scooped up the water, so I'm going to let that start um, settling and you'll see kind of the silt right here um, and the mud kind of will start going here and the water will start clearing up. It looks like I have a little bug in here. And then um, once it kind of settles back out, I will put it back in the water. But I just want to be able to kind of take a look, look at it, view it. Um, I also have a magnifying glass kind of contraption. So um, it kind of hooks together like this. I can put a sample here and then look at it, or I can take this out and kind of look closer at it um, in my sample. When we were hanging out at the pond, we saw a lot of uh, damselflies and dragonflies, um, and some butterflies as well. So I mentioned earlier that uh, dragonflies are different from damselflies because they have two sets of wings. Um, and I just wanted to kind of show a picture to illustrate that. So they've kind of got their front set and the back set, and they can actually move their wings independently of each other. So the front ones can be going down and the back ones are going up. And um, the dragonflies we see today, um, they're very, you know, they're very, very fast, and they're actually ancestors. Um, their ancestors were gigantic dra dragonflies um, from the Carboniferous period. So they were humongous. Um, they kind of would use their wings to swoop all over the place through giant ferns. So they could actually go up to 55 miles per hour. Um, so dragonflies are special because they kind of have gotten smaller. Dragonflies are cool um, because. You know, they had ancestors all the way back there, and um, engineers are kind of jealous of how cool they are and um, how they're able to fly so fast. Um, another cool thing just about bugs in general, um, if you've ever tried catching a dragonfly, it's really, really hard, even if you have a net. Um, and one of the reasons is because they're able to fly like that, but also because of their eyeballs. So. Um, if you remember, bugs just have like a whole bunch of different lenses on their eyes, so they can see a whole bunch of things at the same time. Um, so they can catch prey and see movement. Um, some dragonflies up to 65 feet away, so that's very impressive. 
Um, but um, another thing we see a lot on ponds or around ponds are butterflies. So butterflies, um, if you think of a butterfly versus a dragonfly, um, dragonflies kind of flit around all over the place and um, butterflies kind of fly a little bit um, slower. So here's a dragonfly um, and as you can see it has two wings um, and it does kind of have two sets of wings um, but they're connected together. So where a dragonfly those would be separated right there, these are actually together and that helps them fly longer distances uh, but not quite as fast. So if you think of monarch butterflies um, they migrate all over the place, so they'll go from Mexico up to Canada and kind of back again. Um, and they can do that um, with only taking a couple stops because of how their wings are designed for longer travel versus how a dragonfly's wings are designed to be really fast. So we've kind of got like our super sonic jet of bug and then kind of our nice slow craft. weren't able to catch or find a frog today besides hearing them laugh at us um, behind us, um, we can still talk a little bit about them. So frogs are amphibians, um, so that means that they're cold-blooded and they need to live in water um, for a little bit of their life. So amphibian um, comes from the Greek word amphibios, which means a double life, to live a double life. So part of their life, they have to be in the water completely. Um, so they start off as eggs, and we're going to play a game about this. So they start off as eggs, um, they're kind of hanging out in the water, and then they turn into tadpoles. So those are kind of like fishy little guys if you've never seen them. Um, and then after that, they start growing kind of gills um, so they can breathe underwater. Uh, um, they'll get a nice long tail, and then they'll start growing their hind legs. So they'll just be kind of have a tail, hind legs, and then their front legs will start to poke out of their skin afterwards. So there's definitely like a really awkward stage in there for the frog. And after that, their tail kind of shrinks back up, and then you have the normal sized frog. So to remember that life cycle, um, we're gonna play a game of rock, paper, scissors. So if you have other friends around you, you can join them um, in this game. So just make sure you guys agree on how you're gonna play rock, paper, scissors. So if you're doing rock, paper, scissors, or rock, paper, scissors, shoot, what would you like to do? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, so we're gonna play rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Um, so we're all, we're both gonna start off as so we're going to start off with eggs, and you have to go up to somebody else who is also an egg and play rock, paper, scissors with them. Once you do that, then you can kind of graduate to the next stage of being a frog. So we're going to go through the whole life cycle. Ready? Yes, okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Uh, okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Uh, so she won. So now she's going to graduate to being a tadpole. But she doesn't quite have to be on the, the tail yet. So she's just a tadpole. And Alfred could be somebody else, and I'm also a tadpole, so we're gonna come up to each other, and then we're gonna play rock, paper, scissors, rock, paper, scissors, shoot! She knows me. Okay, <laughs> so now that she's already been a tadpole, now she's gonna be kind of the awkward stage tadpole um, where she's got her legs, but she only has one arm. So she's gonna kind of, yeah, be like this. So I'm the awkward tadpole. I've got my two hind legs, my other arm hasn't poked through yet. So, rock, paper, scissors, shoot! I'm really good at this game. <laughs> okay, I know. So now she won and she has graduated to a full grown frog. So she can hop over to the side and scream, rib it, rib it, rib it, rib it, rib it, and so everybody else is done. So that is a game to kind of learn the life cycle of frogs um, at home. Well, thanks for joining me today as we walked around the pond and explored it, uh, looked for frogs, um, caught some critters and um, looked at the flowers and stuff like that. So I encourage you to go find a pond or stream or some sort of water that you can explore and uh, show us what you find. Take care.